This is the Crappie Connection brought to you by Redneck Rubber, Power Crappie, Visit Ridgeland, b and Poles, K9 Fishing, Cornfield Fishing Gear, Bobby Garland Baits, Jenko Fishing, Denali Rods, The Direction TV, Top Hat Jigs, Crappie Magnet, Anderson Minnow Farm, Hook and Bullet Purpose Built Optics. What's up, guys? Brad Chapel back at the Crappie Expo 2022, Branson, Missouri. I got a couple guys with me. I'm gonna let them introduce themselves, and probably don't even need it, but we're gonna do it anyway. Two of the the top dogs in this sport, and it's been that way for a long time. Go ahead and kick it off, Scott. Where you from? What you I, do? I'm from Cochran, Georgia. Uh, you know, historically fished with my dad, Billy. Yep. Uh, for years and years and still do uh but uh this tournament uh just kind of teamed up with eric you know daddy's back at home on the farm you know kind of crop season's coming to an end starting to harvest our crops so yeah um uh, you know just it kind of inconvenient for both of us to come and and he's allowed me the opportunity to come and eric was nice enough to let me jump in the boat with him all right well, tell us about yourself eric where you're from what you do um, Eric Kegel, I'm from Tallahassee, Alabama. I'm right around Auburn, Montgomery area, right there in central Alabama. And uh, I've been I've been guiding this. I guess this will be my fifth year as a full time guide, and I've been guiding for about nine, I guess nine years total. But I'm a full time fishing guide up there in Alabama. And you know, I know a lot of you guys know I go to Mississippi in the summer, and you know, pretty much November through May, I'm in Alabama. So I fish every day. <laughs> so you're kind of a resident of both states almost. Uh, I guess you could say that. So does sure. that mean we've converted you over to uh, like an Ole Miss fan or anything uh, like that? Or? I, I can't say that now. <laughs> but, uh, but, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm in Mississippi for about three months every summer. And, I, you know, it's kind of a good – I enjoy it because it's a change of pace. You know, I, it's something different for me to yeah. look forward to. And, you know, because, like I said, I'm in Alabama for – nine months out of the year seeing the same waters so it's kind of a good change of yeah. pace for me i think that red and black starting to rub off on it <laughs> is it really bit. yeah i yeah. believe it is <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> I, I think i hear see uh eric kind of even turn a red over that yeah. statement a little bit and he, he's not liking it that ain't happening you know these guys they just finished up this crappie expo mm-hmm. tournament and wind up in th- uh, second place right yeah That's right. man out of a uh beautiful lake kind of tell us about your experience this week on this lake and what you guys did and what you would do over at this point well uh my experience on the lake was just yesterday yeah quite honestly yeah um, it was my daughter's uh she made varsity as a high school at, at high school she's a ninth grader and uh made the varsity team and just so happened that they made the playoffs at the end of their season and so uh, I called Eric last week when I found out, or was it week before last or something weeks, like yeah. that. I was like, man, Emmy's in the playoffs. I, I can't come help you do anything. Um, you know, I said, I don't know how far they're going to make it, but um, I, I can't miss her games. You know, I don't know that she'll ever make another playoff season. Right. And uh, and just thankfully, you know, Eric was very <coughs> um, understanding and, and supportive of it was okay with it 100 percent and i i look i know how hard it is he put in hours upon hours scanning and uh trying to find something and i'm just thankful that that he was able to keep us in contention you know every day of the tournament until i got here to help him because it's work i mean it yeah. is it's it's not like we're just out there pleasure fishing it's work and um 
you know, part of me, I feel bad because I wasn't there uh, not only to help him practice because it's, it's tiresome sitting behind that steering wheel and scanning. You know, I mean, your eyes get tired. You you, you physically get tired. It can tired. Be kind of boring by yourself as well. It is. I mean, and you're sitting there, you're having to make decisions without talking to anybody and, and working through those decisions. So, you're, you know, you're wondering if you're making the right decisions. And um, But he did an awesome job, and I, I'm thankful for that. Um, and thankful for his understanding in yeah. that, you know, um, because I, I know what kind of work it is, you know, back before live sonar when when you had to rely basically on side imaging. Uh, I, I would stay out 11, 12 o'clock at night. Even the last couple of years, Eric and I, we got up at Grenada one morning I, at 3.30, was out there on the water at 3.30 scanning, you know, just looking for something. Uh, that would give us an, an advantage, you know, something that would just help us save time throughout the day, you know. Yeah. And um, it, it, so it's work, and I'm just appreciative of him uh, doing that <clears throat> and just allowing me to come get on the boat. But that yesterday was, uh, I mean, it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Um, I've never been on any other lake that even compares to, as far as aesthetics go to, to Table Rock. I know just driving through the mountains here is uh, – and it's it's just beautiful up there the trees are turning colors right now Mm -hmm. here and uh, it's very very beautiful place i definitely agree eric kind of start off the week when you got here and your mindset and what was your whole game plan in the beginning the first day you know we did a we did i think the last podcast i did with you was here two years ago and and uh tc lloyd and i came in fourth here a couple years ago and had a good tournament and you know, in hindsight, I wish I wouldn't have said anything to you about those state brush piles back then. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> because there's a lot of people looking at them this year that they probably uh-huh. wouldn't have been without hearing that podcast. But Uh-oh. I'm kidding. I mean, it, you know, it, 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 it is what it is. But uh, that's, I enjoy sharing stuff with people and, and, and helping yep. them figure it out. That's why I guide for a living. But uh, I got here with, with, with a, already a little bit of understanding of, of this lake and and uh, what the blackfish do here this time of the year. So I already had a little bit of understanding of, of what goes on here, and and it that, that paid off for me. Um, I found a lot of – this lake has a lot more fish in it than I thought two years ago. And um, I found a lot of fish. Uh, we were fishing mostly brush piles. Um, that's one thing about Scott and myself. Uh, we do a little bit of everything in Georgia and Alabama. We fish. A, we don't have much timber, but we fish a little bit of timber. We fish. We shoot docks. We fish brush piles. We pull in open water. So we do a little bit of everything. So we got a pretty big arsenal of how to catch a fish. And, yeah. And uh, and and that's basically what happened here. I, I, I turned that hummingbird on for four days, and I would I would find fish. I would stop fish that pile see what size fish were on it and leave it alone and the ones that we wanted to fish with bigger fish i'd mark them um one thing that happened here that i haven't seen happen before in alabama or georgia i, I mean i talked to scott about it too but some of the piles that i had found bigger fish on some of the brush i'm speaking of brush piles but some of the brush piles that i had found bigger fish on you know there'd be 20 or 30 fish on that pile and uh a couple of them when i went back on day two didn't have any fish on them and uh usually a, a black fish when they make home in a brush pile they're gonna they're gonna be there pretty yeah. much every day or some yeah. new fish are gonna come in there but they're gonna stay there and and, and uh that, that was really weird to me we pulled up on a pile yesterday scott and i and i told him i said man this thing's loaded it's been loaded the last two days we pull up and there's not a single fish on it, and that wasn't the first time that happened. It happened to me by myself the day before, so uh, you know, r- really, I, I went. I spent a ton of time graphing, marking brush piles and trees and, and piers that had fish on them, and and kind of figured out which ones were holding the better fish. But what really helped us in this tournament, and and this is not something I do all the time, uh, and you know, it, it just happened to work this way, and. You know, I said it before, but good decisions lead to good results, and bad decisions lead to bad results. But on day two, I had a spotter in the boat with me, and a great guy. Uh, we were cutting up, and I, I had a pretty good weight on day two, about the same as I had on day one, and I knew I'd probably make the cut for day three. But we were, I was out of fish. I, I, didn't have, I didn't have anything to fish for day three, so 
I cut the hummingbird back on during the tournament at 12 noon and spent two hours graphing again during the tournament and found two two new brush piles. Uh, one of them has some really good fish on it, and I couldn't get them to eat at 1 o'clock. And uh, I told Scott when, I, when he got in town, I said, I got us somewhere to start tomorrow. And uh, <laughs> we, if I wouldn't have done that and we wouldn't have had that one spot yesterday, we'd have been in trouble. We pulled in there and caught 10 and a half pounds in about 10 minutes. Hmm. I mean, it was just it was just on fire, but you know, I we talked hindsight fifty fifty. We talked about it last night, but you know, we, I I was never on twelve pounds here, so I didn't yeah. have the fish to, to we we didn't have the fish to beat to beat Hayden. You know, if he comes in with twelve pounds, we just didn't. You know, and he, yeah, you know, you, you can. You can hate the game, but you can't hate the player, and, and that kid's unbelievable <laughs> right now. You yeah. know, and he, he just – you can't take anything away from him. He's a he, he's a humble, you know, kid, very respectful, and, and he is, you know, dang good at what he does. Would you call him yesterday? I, I got a kick out of that one. Uh, well, I can't say that on the air. <laughs> but, uh, but no, he, he, he's, a, he, he's a great kid, man. I, I enjoy talking with him, and yeah. he's got a – He's got a, a better understanding of how those electronics work than, you know, right now than anybody else in the country. I mean, I, you know, I fished with, with, with Josh Jones and Matthew Rogers, and I know all those guys. And, you know, I, I, I'm not saying – well, I'll go ahead and say it. it, it right now, he's, he's the top guy in the country. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I hate yeah. it, and, and that's – he does it every day, and he works hard at it. And that's, that's why I respect the kid because that's what me and Scott have built our – you know, repertoire on is, is hard work, and that's that's what that's what pulls my respect from somebody somebody that works really hard at it, and and I see him in Mississippi every day on the water in the summer, you know, just like I am. Yeah. And uh and and I, and you know that's something that that, that I respect. Yeah, he he's a <coughs> he's a hammer. I've nicknamed him a while back the hammer because uh he's gonna hammer it down. He he very suddenly has a bad day, you know, and, and it's <laughs> yeah. you know, very very rare. He's going to be the hammer for a long time, yeah. too, yeah. probably. Yeah, that's right. We're yeah. going to, hey, we're going to slip up and get him again. And, oh, days. I have no doubt. <laughs> you know, you, both of you guys have done so much in this sport through the years. I mean, man, I know Scott and you and your dads go – ever since I started fishing crappie masters, you guys are already there and winning at that time. So, I mean, how many years did you guys fish now these tournaments? Well, I started fishing with my dad. Um, it was probably in – maybe 2008 or 9 is when I started fishing with him as a tournament partner but he was fishing with a fellow by the name of Danny Cannon uh, and they fished for years back in the um, crappy thon days you know you yeah. know you know, um, you know Danny Cannon you know his, Billy's old partner he, he guys on Talquin that's Danny yeah that's Danny oh Cannon really over there yeah yeah Lake Talquin I think it's Lake Talquin guide service I think yeah mm-hmm. what his business is but he and he and dad were, were partners and then uh, you know I, I fished with my dad when I was little we'd always go fishing yeah, of course. You know? and uh, but you know my dad's competitive guy and uh, has always has been and uh, he would fish tournaments and uh, when I when I got married my wife and I we fished some tournaments and we had some success and uh, but um, that's tough to do there in itself. <laughs> it is, it is. You know, we, we done done well in a few tournaments, and uh, but I was really, as far as tournament fishing wise, I was really green. You know, I I really didn't know uh, didn't know how to tournament fish, and and that's what a lot of people don't understand. There's a big difference oh, yeah. in fishing and catching fish and tournament fishing. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's two completely different worlds, and uh, I didn't know how to tournament fish, and. Uh, so my wife became pregnant uh, with our oldest child, and um, it was kind of hard for her to, you know, to fish tournaments yeah. at that point in time. Uh, and so my dad and I decided, you know, it was just a great way for us to spend time together. We didn't get to spend a whole lot of time together uh, other than working on the farm, me helping him on the farm. I, I'm in the timber business, and I also farm now, but at the time I wasn't farming other than just helping him. And um, so we wasn't getting to spend a whole lot of time together. And so it was just a great way for us to, you know, spend some time together away from, yeah. you know, working. Get into your hobby more and, That's and right. spend time together. And 
Yeah, probably so made some money together too. We have, we have, we have made some money together, but we have lost a lot more <laughs> together than we've made. But You're right. uh, you know, the 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 real stinger for us, and, and there's been a lot of highs in our uh, in our fishing career, tournament fishing career. Uh, the one being we won, you know, the 2016 Angler Team of the Year, mm-hmm. and I'm so. What part of what makes it so? Uh, good to me and what i'm most proud of i've done it without live sonar yeah i beat the guys um and I, i'm probably gonna strike a match when i say this but um i done it is what i consider actual fishing yeah um not uh, hunting not not hunting not looking yeah. at a fish you know not knowing if they're there just uh just fishing yeah. you know just patterning fish and figuring out how to catch those bigger fish you know without looking at them and uh and i don't mean that uh, anything away from it. Uh, anything away from a live scope because i love live scope fishing yep. I, I mean i i don't have a rod holder on my boat anymore mm-hmm. that's how much i love live scope fishing wow but um for guys like my dad and um you know a, a few other just what i consider legends in our sport mm-hmm. um live scope has i ain't i'm not gonna say it ruined crappy fishing for them but it's it's definitely um, kind of sidelined. It, it, it has sidelined those guys, and it's it's really a sad thing, in my opinion. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'll be the first to admit it, and we'll, we'll go back to the hammer there. I got in a boat way before he started fishing tournaments, and I knew at that point I couldn't keep it with this kid physically, even. I mean, it's it's a lot more physical, mm-hmm. uh, eye hand coordination is king in my opinion and, and then you have boat control as well it is um but that eye hand coordination it's it's you know you say eye hand and, and i said it the other night it's really eye hand foot yes yeah you know and it's it's, it's all it's, it's a mixture of all three and yeah. and, and it's coordination i mean he, you got to be coordinated and in, in, in position of your foot and you know just like hey now i tell people all the time casting is no different where the direction you're putting the bait is him long poling but you know i hadn't had to look at a trolling motor head in you know four years i mean i you know it's all feel once, yeah it's mm-hmm. all feel of, of where you don't have to when you get used to it you don't have to look at it. it's just a, a coordinated effort you know to to place the bait and you know if if I, i've never got a chance to watch hayden fish but i'm always i'm always trying to beat him <laughs> but but uh I, i'm sure if you go watch him it's very impressive on yeah. how, how efficiently he drops a bait on those fishers quick head. yeah so yeah. quick yeah that's what uh the mincota and i'm not sponsored by mincota but the mincota <coughs> ultrax trolling motor my in my opinion and for what it's worth is the best trolling motor there is for it because it's got that cable driven motor feel it's actually you know i know it's electronic but it feels the head operation the foot control is cable driven you know and you don't have to look at the you you moving the foot pedal you know exactly which way you're going you don't have to look Mm -hmm. at the head of the motor yeah i'm you know i think it's no matter it's kind of like a rod it's once you get that feel going uh man it's it's such a you're not thinking at that point your foot's reacting yep. as your mind's paying attention to that fish in that screen um and i have finally gotten to the point that i don't have to look at my head anymore on the nitro yeah. motor but mm-hmm. it and people are like well how are you casting just looking down it's just like well i've spent a couple probably now a thousand hours on that thing. If, if your foot's flat it's straight ahead. That's right. If your <laughs> That's foot's right. down, it's to the right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's hard for me. I'm used to controlling the boat. I'm used to driving the boat, mm-hmm. you know, with Daddy. And then uh, and I'm sitting on the left hand side of the boat. And then I jump in the boat with Eric. I'm not controlling anything. I'm just there and fishing. And and I'm constantly having to catch myself looking at the trolling motor. Where, where's he got it pointed at? You know or yeah you know and and that's hard to do actually it is a hard transition it, it really is. is and 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 go, getting back to the tournament is what makes me feel so bad for not being here on uh tuesday and wednesday just by not even me fishing just by uh, when he catches a fish taking that fish to the back waiting it, tagging up. it waiting it you know if he he had to do that by himself on in on tuesday and wednesday and 
you don't realize if you're catching fish, there's a lot of time of the day that you're not fishing. Yeah. And, um, you know, just like yesterday morning, we pulled up on that uh, brush pile, and I, I've always let him, I always let him throw first, you know, uh, because he's controlling, he's controlling everything, and uh, a lot of times he's going to be dead on target. And he's going to catch that fish. Well, I'm going to net the fish, take it to the back, and by the That's time right. I get done, he, he's whatever. already got another yeah. one on, you know, and I'm running up there trying to net another one. I bet you I didn't fish probably the first 20 minutes of the tournament i didn't fish two minutes probably two or three minutes and and this you know him saying that and i've always said it didn't it didn't really make a difference and 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 let me preface this by saying what i said earlier we were never on the fish to beat hayden with 12 pounds so right. that's not what we're saying here at all but that's right it does make a difference having a guy in the boat because like yesterday morning that pile produced for us for about 30 minutes and we probably i probably you know hell scott still caught probably five to ten fish off of them and i probably caught 25 but that fire time that 30 minutes that those fish are firing i would probably lose almost five to ten minutes if i had to call all those fish right so you know that 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 five to ten minutes makes a huge difference when that's right. when they're biting yeah and, and you know it, it it definitely helped a little bit for sure and so much could go wrong when he's up you know and you don't think about it i know he probably hit spot lock when he gets up so he don't drift up on top of the pile but what you know he could bump it and knock it off and then he's about there culling the fish and then let the boat get on top of the pile and get the shot to get over the fish you know uh it's just I, it's just impressive that he made it uh as high as, as, high as he did by himself and, and a lot of people the tournament fishermen understand it but i don't think the general population just understand how hard it was you know for him to do that by himself and uh it, it's it's well, a tough going back you, you won a national championship by yourself am i right i did um you know that that was two years ago and it feels like 50 to be honest with <laughs> yeah. you and, and i and i'll tell you know i'm i'm the same guy today with you as i am yeah. when i leave here and i you know I, you know that might be one of my downfalls but i'm the same guy seven days a week i've got a question i'm gonna ask him we'll see you but uh, but, but no, the, you know, I did. I won. I won the national championship in 2020, and uh, we were talking like it's it's harder right now to win a tournament in crappy fishing, and 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 not just because the old Hammer Hayden Jeffries is here, but that's a big reason. But it's because everybody's good now. It's getting better and better. Uh, and and you know, back in the day, you had you had. 15 to, to 20 people that were mm-hmm. that were good fishermen and, and and were learning the technology together and they had a chance to win now there's 50 60 people when you show up to a tournament that that really have a chance to to win and are really good at at you know with the technology so it's definitely harder now the, la- the last two years has just gotten you know tougher and tougher to to win a tournament and i mean and that's that's not a bad thing that that you know, these guys that are really good, all that does is drive me to get better and make me a better fisherman. There's two ways to look at that. You know, you can either you can either give up and quit or you can get on the ball and, and, and learn. And, and and I still learn every day. I mean I fish oh, yeah. I fish over three hundred days a year and I still learn something almost every day or, or, or try to figure something out every day and and that's, it drives me. I, you know, I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, I'd like to win every tournament, just like anybody else. But that 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 gets boring too sometimes. I mean, you, you gotta if you don't work for it, it doesn't mean as much. Yeah. You know, to to me and and it it's driving. I mean, you know, Hayden and several of them other guys that that have whooped up on me. I've I ain't had a great year this year. This, <laughs> this second this tur- play today was uh, well, yesterday well, was this, a really this, good day. This tournament was 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 needed. I mean, I I, need, I, I needed it. I mean, I, I worked I worked really hard this year, and that's just tournament fishing. You're not gonna win every right. tournament. You're gonna lose a lot more than you win. But it's nice to 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 be in the top. You know, a few times a year there and. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm thankful to be, you know, just to be here. I mean, it, like you said earlier, you know, you get seven days on a lake this pretty, and, and this, you know, it's, it's just a beautiful place here. And I had a really good time this week. It was a long, tiring week, you know, no doubt. I mean, I was give out last night. I didn't have any trouble sleeping last right. night. But uh, we, we've had a good week here, and I, I've, I've enjoyed it. You, you, I'm gonna go back to these piles. <clears throat> Were they man-made brush piles, or are you talking about a natural brush pile? 
Um, <laughs> Scott's looking at him. No, the uh, <laughs> most most of the piles, the the brush piles that we did the best on, I think were were natural piles. Um, you know, the state's got all the piles marked, and we did catch several fish. I caught several fish this week, keep a good fish off off state piles. But uh, a lot of the piles that really helped us in the tournament and the one that really helped us yesterday were, were, was on a drop-off, and I think it was an old treetop that had blown in there. But, um, it, you know, really natural piles were, were a big a big key to, for us this week. And Beside the, the state piles – do you see a lot of man-made structure in this lake was it an opportunity for say if a guy lives in this area to say hey man i'm gonna go out man and make me some brush piles in this lake listen if if i lived here everybody these these black there's a lot of black nose in this lake i mean a ton of them black nose and black fish uh those fish are going to brush i mean they 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 like brush this time of the year until it gets too cold and then they're going to school off you know off of the shed but uh, I told I told them at the beginning of the week I would love to live here and guide here. This lake's big enough where you can go somewhere different every day. Yeah. And uh, yeah, a, a guy that lives here close to this lake, if he's not putting brush in that lake, he doesn't like to catch crappie. I can tell you that. Yeah, I was just wondering. I hadn't heard. You know, I hear uh, there's a lot of brush piles, but. I didn't know if it was just all the state or natural or mm-hmm. is it an opportunity for a guy around here to go out and make him some oh, yeah. brush piles. And, and and I'm leading to this question is uh, if you've ever watched or follow Eric on uh, Facebook, he's a brush pile making dude. <laughs> he's I mean, tell me about this rig. I think we even talked about it before. and. Uh, I'm gonna come sneak on his boat to actually see this thing in action. You've been, you've been saying that for I know. two years. I ain't seen him yet. Scott. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's hard to catch too, though. Uh, I, I, I'm a, we we make piles in the in the winter mostly uh, up up on. The, I mean, and I have to. I mean, that's what I do for a living. So, uh, but even before I was a full time guide, we 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 made piles every year. I mean, just you know, because we knew we'd catch. They pay off. But uh, every year we spend a week or two making making piles, but. The week before I came here, uh, last week we spent four Monday through Thursday, and uh, this year was a lot better because I actually had two guys that wanted to help. You know, usually I'm by myself. Yeah. But uh, we uh, we went and made we made 48 new piles in four days, and when I say a brush pile, I'm not talking about just a Christmas tree. I'm talking about a big old. Well, that's uh, what I want you to tell us. How do you? What is the Kegel brush pile? Uh. There's a there's a bush that that grows in Alabama. I was telling y'all earlier. It's called a sugarberry bush. Uh, uh, you get you got to cut four or five of them to make a good pile. I, I take a piece of twine and I lay it out on the front deck of that pontoon boat, and then I stack those bushes sideways and I tie them together with that twine. So I tie me a pile together, and then I just add a weight. I tie a weight to the to like the a pile. center block or yeah, about a forty pound. Um, quick creed I, I put in a, a five gallon bucket and put a, a eye bolt in there to tie to well then you can just take the bucket when it dries turn it upside down and shake it and it'll, it just acts as a mold for you yeah to, so you save the bucket and just you know put the concrete in but about a 40 pound block of quick creed and i pull up and i got i got two pontoon bows i got one that we got a dump bed on you just lift it and it falls in the water and i got another one now that's with a, a dump winch. truck yeah i got a, i got another <laughs> one now with a winch electric winch so <laughs> you push a button and it, yeah. it dumps it for you so but but no i mean i like i said i've done it for a long time but now it's gotten to where hey you know the 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 more work i put in uh doing that the easier my living's gonna be so you know it, it that's how it works you know? You'll see, I, I know i do a lot of fishing every day <clears throat> guiding and such and I'll come back home and or he's still be on the water and especially in the fall you'll see Eric already putting his Facebook post out. He's done at eight o'clock in the morning. I'm like, man, I don't need to hardly get out of the bed by eight o'clock. He's already got the fish, cleaned them and back to the house. So that's I gotta get home and take me a nap. Is man. that it? I, I didn't know you had to like something to do every day at lunchtime or what, but you get back home pretty early because of those brush piles, huh? That's right. That's right. Yeah, hard work pays off. Yeah. And then and, so he does it for a living yeah i'm doing it for pleasure tournament yeah. fishing and i don't want my brush pile as big as he is you know yeah. <laughs> i don't want it so easy to find people yeah. you know yeah um uh, do you think um have you found that if you're going to make a brush pile to 
just hold big fish do you do them different compared to you're making a brush pile to hold numbers of fish go ahead scott well i'll, I'll tell you what alabama and you talk about georgia well in georgia i'll be honest with you you can take two in my opinion and from one from my experience you can take two of the exact same trees cut them to make them look the exact same find two points that look exact the same on the lake drop them in 20 one in 20 foot water the other one in 20 foot of water you think they're identical one will have big fish on it one might not have anything one might have just <coughs> eater fish i have no idea what it takes yeah to create a big fish hole uh we had a fella tell us at kentucky lake one time the best way to um uh, make a big fish hole it's by 100 acres of timberland cut all the timber off of it put it in a lake and you'll one of those trees will, <laughs> will hold big fish <laughs> yeah. yeah and it's it's uh you know on on like i agree 100 percent what he just said because we put a lot of different stuff out and it doesn't matter what you put out i mean if it used to when i was when i say when i was growing up you know 20 years ago we we would put we didn't have as much technology as we have now and we yeah. would go out and just put stuff on drop-offs and stuff and you know if you made 10 holes and 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 four or five of them paid off you know then you were good now well, you know, we got a little more dialed in now i can put it right on the ledge or right on the hump or whatever so man we're we're to about 80 percent now if i put 10 in the water usually about eight of them's gonna hold fish but i got probably I won't hesitate to say I got 350, 400 brush piles my, that I've made that are working brush piles on, on, on Lake Martin in Alabama there. And, I mean, you can make 30, and two of them might hold big fish. The the, the other 28 are going to hold just eater fish, and you don't know what to. I don't know what – it's where they want to be, uh, and, and and I hadn't figured that out yet. I just all I, I just got to keep going until mm-hmm. I find them, yeah. you know. I'd be a rich man if I knew how to make a big fish yeah. hole. Yeah. Well, I was trying to get it out of him. Uh. No, I, I, I don't know the answer to tell you. I'd tell you. You know me. I'm, I'm not going to hold it back. Well, I got another question that I don't think you'll hold back either. How do you feel when you see somebody sitting on your brush piles? Oh, uh, there, there, there's. I know what's happened. Well, I mean, yeah, no doubt. I mean, uh, two two things that I don't like. I don't like somebody that goes, you know, and and if. I tell them when they call me, hey, if they're local, and I don't take a lot of locals, but, you know, my, my saying to them is, you know, you're paying me for a fishing trip, not my fishing holes. And, and, and you know, if we're fishing open water fish, no big deal. Yeah. But when we're fishing a brush pile and you show yeah. back up trying to make a living the next day and they're sitting there. But, you know, when somebody just finds that pile in the lake and they're graphing, I mean, that's no different from me and you going and graphing a lake and fishing a brush pile. So I, I don't – that don't bother me at all. I mean, I, that's that's what I used to a lot younger years ago. It bothered the heck out of me. I get mad. Now I just – I figured out that, hey, it ain't worth all that. Just go make a bunch of them, and you always got somewhere to fish. Mm-hmm. So that that's my approach to it now is I just go make a bunch of them. So if they're sitting on one of them, I go to another one, you know. So – doesn't bother me as much anymore. It used to, you know, back when the old the old switch was a lot quicker. <laughs> I tell you, what bothers me, and I know bothers Eric, is whether we're on a pile that we put in or one that we found. A boat rides by, slows yeah. down, and you see him reach out oh, there yeah. and hit mark. Absolutely, you know, I mean, I agree with that. God, but man, you that, know, back back it, in, back in the, yeah, back in the day, you know. And, and this this rolls over into tournament fishing too. But back in the day, when when I first started turn and and you know, keep in mind I've only been tournament fishing for five years. My fifth year tournament fishing. I ain't been doing a long time. Uh, been fishing for a long time. But like Scott said, fishing and tournament fishing two two totally different animals. But back in the day, you know, when when a guy would ride by and see you fishing somewhere. He could go over there all he wants to. He didn't really know how to figure out what you were fishing. You may be fishing two stumps that had 10, 10 big fish on them. He could come over there all he wanted to. He couldn't find that stuff. Now and today at this moment, that guy can pull up over there and put a live camera in the water and, and say, oh, he's fishing those two stumps with 10 fish on them. Yeah. That's what's changed. That's what that's what live sonar has has. has has done you know more than anything is there are no secrets anymore 
there's not an underwater bridge over there or a, a, a little section of timber that, that that they can't find. If if they if they can if they can get in the area, they can see it. I mean, we we got a we got a live underwater camera basically now. Oh yeah. You know, and that's probably, in my opinion, one of the <clears throat> as far as tournament fishing goes. You know, you took the time to figure. I, man, I remember at Lake Talquin before. Uh, it was Navionics had it charted. You know, my dad and Danny, and they idled for hours, uh, a, you know, the day before a tournament. It was cold and raining. Uh, me and my buddy Jacob, we fished uh, We fished a tournament in the Crap USA uh, that same week. And I was back at the cabin. Um, it was when I was really just learning. And I'm like, man, it is flooding rain. It's 30 <laughs> degrees out here. Where are they at? You know, why, yeah. ain't they, why ain't they off the water? They come in soaking wet. And, uh, you know, people were talking, uh, you know, like, where's Billy? Where's Danny? They win the tournament. And, uh, you know, after the tournament was over, everybody was like, well, they wouldn't tell us anything what they were doing. Well, no crap. You up here in, in a yeah. warm cabin, you know, yeah. they out there putting in work. Yeah, and and marking a river channel, you know, that wasn't mapped. And uh, just stuff like that. And then, you know, as technology progresses, you know, the people that you never had to worry about beating you, now all of a sudden they're relevant, you know. And oh, it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's kind of, it's that stings a little bit, but it's just a fact of life. You know, you got to, you got to just, I don't get the opportunity to fish every day like Eric does. I have a regular job, and those guys they can stay on the you know right on the edge of everything that's happening. They can stay sharp and crisp. And uh, if I go to a tournament now where it used to, if if I didn't win or you know get a top three, it was not a good tournament. Now if I, I if I'm in the top ten, I'm, I don't have a pretty good day. Oh, you know. Yeah. Well, guys, I definitely enjoyed talking with you as usual and. I've been wanting to get Scott Williams on here for a while, and uh, of course, I'm, anytime I can get oh Eric at the end here on here, it's a good day as well. But I definitely appreciate you guys' time today, and congratulations on your finish here. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you again on some of these other deals. I appreciate you having us, Brad. Not you know, I want to tell you too. Uh, I listen to every one of your podcasts. Y'all do, y'all do a great job with it, and 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 I I, I enjoy listening to them. I listen, to, like I said, I listen to every one of them. Thank y'all for doing what y'all do. <laughs> oh, well, yep. Uh, we we love what we're doing here with the sport, and I we, we love everything about it. I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I like it all. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're doing it. This, what you've done is what yeah. the sports needed yeah. for yeah. a long time, you yeah. know. And I, and I think you single handedly with the podcast mm-hmm. have helped elevate the sport yeah. to what it's become. Yeah. So yeah. I appreciate it as well. Yeah, you definitely. do a great job with it. Hey, next time uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk more about spotter rigging with Scott here. And uh, I know Eric's a casting king on my mind. And uh, till next time, Brad Chapel here, Scott Williams, Eric Cagle. Holla. Right on my front, big muddy river, a place I'll always remember. Cabin on the lake and a fishing pole. Forever here, I'll rest my soul. I can feel my worries drift away.